So where should you be looking for money to be made in the economy if it remains unsettled, murky even? My next guest says that there are some blue chip stocks that could be the answer. Charles Delardamel is the portfolio manager at International Value Advisors. Charles Delardamel's IVA International Fund, it's outperformed 87 percent of its peers so far this year. Charles, Chuck, good to have you with us on ben, Taking Stock. Thank you. So what's the thesis? A murky outlook for the economy makes it more difficult to pick stocks? Well, it's a difficult market for investors because I think it's a, constra it's a contrasted picture. On the one hand, you have a sluggish economy. On the other hand, you have uh, extremely profitable companies throughout the world. If you look at corporate profits as a percentage of GDP in the U.S., it's close to an all-time high, which is counterintuitive. Uh, given the fact that the economy is growing very slowly. So you've got good news on the corporate front in terms of profits, murky or bad news when it comes to the general economy. So what do you do? How do you make the selection? Well, I think it becomes a stock picker's market, and where we find the best opportunities at IVA uh, currently is really in blue chips in the U.S., especially in, uh, in uh, IT and technology, and also in small-cap Japanese stocks. All right, so let's talk about big technology companies based in the United States. Got to ask you about Microsoft. Right. Got the downgrade to today. Right. You still like the shares of Microsoft? Oh, absolutely. I think today you pay about 10 times earnings. Uh, it's a stock that's gone nowhere in 10 years. And frankly, it's a business model, I think, that's fairly simple. They just take a fee per box, a fee per computer shipped, a fee per server shipped, and there'll be more computers and more servers shipped throughout the world in the coming years. Now, they've made a number of missteps. Uh, you know, they tried to take a fee per mobile phone, for instance. They failed completely. They tried to take a fee per set-top box in cable. They failed completely. But today, Today you get a 10% free cash flow yield, four bucks a share in cash, uh, and if inflation comes back, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a business that has got pricing power, and so uh, what's not to like? All right, what's not to like about MasterCard? You view that really as a technology company. It's not something that is going to be offering credit to people. That's what the banks do that use That's the MasterCard right. and the Visa system. That's These right. are just technology intermediaries. Yes, and I think there is a misperception about MasterCard, a misperception that they take the bulk of the fee that's being charged to the merchant. But that's not the case. Of the 2 3% that the merchants uh, have to pay to the credit card companies, uh, MasterCard takes about 20 basis points to facilitate the transaction and it's the banks really that make the bulk of the fees uh, and there is obviously regulation uh, potentially coming on the debit card business which is a very small percentage of the overall MasterCard business it's about 15 percent of the business uh, I, we don't think that the fees are going to be cut for MasterCard but even if they were it's only 15 percent of the business meanwhile you, you have two and a half trillion dollars that go through that plastic every year at MasterCard and they take a fee on that 12 percent of GDP in the U.S. gets charged on the card and so if inflation comes back, it's a tremendous business to own. That must, and be, you that must be some kind of you know, movement of funds every day going yes, through the system. Absolutely. All right, so you like MasterCard. You also like Microsoft. But you also like some stocks based in Japan. You like KDDI. That's right. And you're also interested in Docomo, right? So That's right. So why just, Japan? Just to, just to point out that the Japanese valuations are extremely cheap uh, and that in Japan you ca can now get dividend yields of 3 to 5% where the 10-year uh, JGB Japanese government yield is only uh, is less than 1% these days. So at some point, some of these funds that are going into long-term bonds will come back to the Japanese market, and you may have a surprise outperformance of the Japanese market. In the meantime, we'll, we'll bank the 3 to 5% dividend yields with no debt on the balance sheet uh, and hope for the best. And you bank those 3 to 5% dividend yields in Japanese yen. You that's translate right. those back into U.S. dollars. The yen strengthens. Let that me helps. Guess, that's also a bet on the decline yes, value yes. of the U.S. So, especially if you're not owning exporters, you should be careful about the yen because one of the difficulty would be if the yen were to weaken. So we do hedge uh, close to 50% of our yen exposure to mitigate uh, the potential uh, weakening of the yen. Do you think that's going to continue? Do you think the yen is going to continue to strengthen, or are we going we're to not sure. Kind of we're not sure, but we own mostly non-exporters, which is, which is unusual uh, when you have a, a, a portfolio of Japanese stocks. And since 
we have non-exporters, they would not benefit from the yen weakening. So we, we prefer to be cautious and we prefer to hedge about half of our yen exposure. And stay domestic in Japan. Correct. I yes. want to thank you very much. Uh, Charles Delardemel coming to us from IVA. Good to get, have you. You can't stay away so long next time. Come, come and spend some more time <laughs> thank with you, us. Thank Good you. to have you with us. Some insight <laughs> into value investing.